Okay, today I'm going to be checking out Gale Force 9's new tabletop game, the World of Tanks Miniatures game. Taking a look at the World of Tanks Miniatures game, which is a collaboration between Gale Force 9 and Wargaming.net to bring the computer game to the tabletop. So in the starter set, uh, you get a tray full of plastic with some cards and tokens and tanks. Take a look at those in a moment. We also get the cardboard components. So you can play your games of World of Tanks on the tabletop. So, you get a rulebook. Um, rulebook is not particularly taxing. There's about 20 pages of rules and then the last few pages contain various scenarios. Um, I will be doing a round breakdown and a let's play um, to go through this in detail. So keep your eye out for that. So with the card components there are two sheets which are similar but not 100% identical. So, we have uh, some two-dimensional scenery, so there are walls, there are some buildings, there's a forest which actually doubles as a hill if you want to play the other side. We have various markers, so you have damage counters and these are for destroyed tanks. Speed markers, and then the White and black numbers are if you have multiple uh, vehicles on the same side that you need to track uh, which Sherman is which or which Panzer IV. The second sheet has another hill slash forest, three more buildings, some more damage, the movement arrow, the advantage which um, is just something that passes back and forth so if any ties come up during the game, whoever currently holds the advantage uh, marker wins those ties. And there are also these little green objective marker flag type things, or red, so double sided. Lastly we have uh, the tech trees. These will be familiar for people who play World of Tanks. Um, currently there are four factions, so the starter set contains one model from each. Uh, wave 1 is going to be the Stug, SU, the Lee and the Valentine. Now if you're an English speaker these are out already along with the core set. Um, they will be coming uh, in November for French, German, Polish, Spanish, Italian languages. Uh, so they're going to be running about a month behind the English releases and then I believe the waves are due to come out approximately every three months after that so so waves two to five will be 2021 um, along with some other things like die sets and decals uh, which have things like the world of tanks ace markers and, and little phrases and things because while world of tanks are based on the second world war tanks um, it's not 100% historically accurate as I think anybody who's played it knows. Um, so you can decorate your tanks a fair bit. So let's take a look at the tanks. Okay, so let's have a quick look at the components then that you get apart from the cardboard. So like I say, four tanks, they are pre-built uh, and they're also pre-primed. So some of them obviously um, come in a slightly different colour from Battlefront. Um, which is Gale Force 9 sort of sister company. Uh, and these look like the Battlefront miniatures that have been built. So for example the Panzer IV, um, Zimmer on the hull, Schertzen around the side of the hull and turret. Nice clean miniature if you've seen the Flames of War Battlefront miniatures you've seen them before. Um, I have to say that for pre-builds the standard is very good. I've put quite a few of these vehicles together myself 
and they haven't just been roughly clipped off the sprues. And I believe all of the waves are due to come like this, so everything will be pre-built with specific um, cards in with them. So we see a Sherman. Obviously, if you just want to play them in the colours they come, if you're not a miniature gamer but a board gamer, or somebody wanting to play about in a World of Tanks game, then the fact they're coloured is very handy. Um, but likewise, if you want to go nuts, you can either paint them historically accurate or you can... a bit of a clipping there. Yeah. Um, or you can go full World of the Tanks and give it one of the outrageous camo schemes that they occasionally will do. There's a Russian T-34. That's probably got the most noticeable clip mark on the turret. Not egregious, but there we are. Cromwell. Big brick of a thing. So, tanks are nice. Um, they are a well-established kit by now anyway, so that's not particularly surprising. Bringing in some of the card decks. So, I'm not going to go through how to play in its entirety, uh, but what I will say is there are these damage cards, which are for critical. Um, some of them will have no damage, some of them will have additional damage on top of the critical, and then you also have repairable and non-repairable. So if you take a critical hit, you draw one of these cards at random and apply it to your tank. Speaking of tanks, we have the cards. They are double-sided. Uh, on the reverse you get your garage slot, it tells you any special rules, so like in World of Tanks there are light, medium, heavy tank destroyers, SPGs, um, and they get various abilities, so a medium tank can reroll a single blank on an attack dice, and then it gives you the history of the tank in question. The other side tells you exactly what's going on. Now, in World of Tanks, when you're building a platoon, there is a specific stat weights that they use. Uh, they don't have that here, it's simply a cost. So even though these are tier four tanks, and presumably we will see tier five and tier six, there's no particular requirement. In fact, I'll just flick through these. There's no particular requirement for you to build a platoon that's all tier four or all tier five or all tier six. You can mix and match and it's just the cost that you're attempting to um, match. So there's T-34 and the Panzer. Um, very simply, mobility tells you how many moves you can make up to per turn. Firepower is how many die you roll to shoot with modifiers. Survivability is how many die you roll to defend against that. Initiative is the order in which you activate. And then down here You've got your hit points, so they can take four hit points before destroyed. However, um, some modules will, or some um, upgrades, can potentially stop working when you reach a certain point. So it might say, you know, the gun may not be as effective when you're in red, uh, and these change. So some of the larger tanks may have eight points uh, and split two, two, and two, and two down the line. So. And then finally we have our crew, and this is where it becomes more like um, the World of Tanks computer game because you can upgrade all of your crew and you can also upgrade your tank with various um, little bits, whether it is something like firefighting, so you can re-roll a field repair check, uh, or repairing an engine fire on a critical card. Um, you can have different ammunition. Uh, I think you can have three types of am ammunition. You can have things like this, where you can see it's limited to the uh, Russians only, or the Soviets. At the start of the movement phase, you can suffer one damage to gain three to your initiative until the end of the phase, which will help you in both moving and shooting. Or some are multi, uh, multi, I was going to say purpose, either multi-nation or nation-free if it doesn't have a specific person in there. So that's one set of upgrades. 
there's a second set that tells you to open it first. And in the game, there's a, a brief playthrough where they use some of these. Um, it's not that they're different from the other set. It's just that they've specifically pulled these out to make them easier. So here, for example, you can see it's an upgrade to your gunner for your crew. These don't stack. So you've, if you've got a plus two on your gunner and then plus one from something else, you'll only be using the plus two. Finally, you get six of these little World of Tice, or Tanks dice. They have got three blank sides, uh, a single World of Tanks symbol, which is your crit, and then an impact, which is your hit. Um, so whether you're rolling to attack or to defend, you, you'll be using these dice anyway. There are modifiers that add or subtract dice, but there is a dice cap, so you're never going to be rolling more than six in an attack or in a defense. Um, although there are some vehicles that gain bonuses, like the uh, the medium is able to re-roll a blank. Uh, tank destroyers, I believe, if they're halted in cover, they gain a dice when they're shooting, so they become a bit more uh, powerful when they're sniping. So that's the very basic run through of our starter set. So there we go. Uh, it looks like a nice set. Uh, I think this is going to be great for people who possibly are fans of World of Tanks but maybe not into tabletop or miniatures game because it's a low entry point. Um, so it may be one that possibly somebody who's already collecting may want to grab uh, for a sibling or a family member or friend. Let me know what you think below. I'm going to be hopefully sitting down with John and playing through some games, uh, which we'll see soon on the site. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.